Um, what you got there? It's a smoothie. Before I get to the topic of this video, I just wanted to address some points about my last one. Someone brought up a very good point that I wasn't aware of, and that is the actual reason the Infinity was built. The Infinity was intended as a lifeboat for humanity should the Covenant destroy Earth, which was looking very very likely towards the end of the war. It was apparently built in secret, and I actually think that's a cool idea and it's my fault for not having done enough research on the Infinity as a ship. I'm still not a fan of its design, but that's a personal viewpoint. I will also maintain that humanity should not be as powerful as it is after the war, even with the Infinity. Even though we have a powerful ship outfitted with fancy new upgrades and Forerunner artifacts, that doesn't mean we have the capability to function anywhere near the same capacity that we did. Also, its mission to seek out the rest of the Halos still doesn't make any sense either. I mean, wouldn't the UNSC or the Swords of St. Helios have collected data in Halo 3, or no? I figured it would make sense that someone would have obtained the locations of the other Halos during this campaign. Or how about after the war? I understand that the Ark was ravaged by the premature activation of Installation 04B, calling it Installation 08 just makes things more confusing to me, but whatever. But it was not destroyed as we see with the UNSC Rubicon. Regardless, I don't think its mission being focused on peace and exploration makes much sense considering its importance. Also, I realized I was quite vague on the specifics of how I would have improved the setting, aside from sort of these broad terms, so I'm planning on making a follow-up video to my first at some point in the future. But anyways, it's time to talk about something else that I deemed did not make sense at all, and oh boy, am I going to get heated on this one. I'll go ahead and rip this bandaid off. Uh, I absolutely hate the Kalo 5 trilogy. I think they are a ridiculous betrayal of the canon, and the way that Karen Travis writes her characters is absolutely absurd but allow me to elaborate. First, let's start with something I mentioned in my last video, the portrayal of Oni. Oni under the Bungie era of Halo was never some corrupt shadow government. They were an intelligence agency that did some messed up things, sure, but were ultimately subservient to the UNSC in the end. The idea that Margaret Parangoski somehow outranks Lord Hood, the de facto commander-in-chief of the military by the time of the Kilo 5 trilogy and the end of the original Halo trilogy, is absurd. Why is Parangoski able to get away with the things that she does? As Blackbox points out, Section Zero polices the other sections of Oni, so this kind of corruption shouldn't exist, at least nowhere near on this scale. But let's just say that she's going overboard and essentially defying the chain of command, which she is by supplying the enemies of humanity's only ally after the war. The question remains as to why she would do this. Let me break this down. Let's say that we fund and supply the enemies of the Arbiter, which we do, or at least Oni does. What happens if he loses? What happens if Thel dies and someone supplants him? We get a Covenant Warlord who hates humanity ruling Sanghelios. Or what if we take him out for being a war criminal due to his, you know, killing of almost 2 billion people? We get the same result. What about if we just keep funding his enemies but he finds out? Although it's heavily implied that Thel can't stand Oni, this would threaten the already fragile peace we have. Then, we end up turning our ally into an enemy. What do we have to gain in any of these outcomes? Sure, the Swords of St. Helios are busy fighting all of their numerous enemies in their civil war, but why? No, seriously, why? What sense does it make? Who comes to our aid in the post-war chaos where humanity is in a worse spot than it ever has been? No one. No one does. Another big issue I have with Parangoski is her moral grandstanding, but I'll get to that when we talk about Halsey. Oh boy, we're going to talk about Halsey later. But let's focus on the Sanghealy and the way Karen Travis writes them. Her books are largely responsible for why the Sanghealy are such lumbering idiotic brutes in the 343 games. According to her writing, at some point the Sanghealy believed that humanity were parasites that took over the bodies of insectoids because of their armor. Let me repeat that. At some point, the Sanghealy believed that humanity were parasites that took over the bodies of insectoids because of their armor. Setting aside the fact that the Sanghealy are warriors who wear metal armor, 
they would have undoubtedly seen humans without armor. You know, civilians and the like when they were invading planet after planet. Another colossal world building issue is the lore that Sanghili never know their true fathers. This makes no sense. If their society is a feudal, patrilineal, patriarchal society, then why would fathers not raise their sons? Supposedly it's to offset nepotism and loyalty to the clan, but the young Sanghili are still raised by an uncle, so this doesn't make any sense. Another colossal issue is the hatred of doctors by the Sanghili. This is also idiotic. Of battle, I would rather take my own life than let you touch me. That life is not yours to take. You belong to the Arbiter, and he believes you are worth repairing. I refuse to be shamed by a... <sighs> medic. The Singhili make use of medical technology in war, and the idea that spilling blood at all outside a battle is frowned upon, I guess it's not necessarily bad in writing a warrior society, except that if you know even the slightest bit about warrior or martial cultures, doctors are valued. Not necessarily frowned upon all the time, but what do I know? The Singhili also have weird dialogue, like referring to Lord Hood as the shipmaster of shipmasters. That's stupid. They have fleet masters and the title of supreme commander in their military. Why would they not understand what an admiral is? Are, are you starting to see a problem here? It, the Singhili don't seem to match up with the deadly and intelligent species we saw in the Bungie era. You can blame Karen Travis's way of researching, or lack thereof. She apparently has done similar things to Star Wars, but it's been such a long time since I read the Republic Commando books, so I'll reserve judgment for when I do again. But apparently she has a penchant for doing as little research as possible to write the universe she has control over to the way she wants it. She basically goes through a list of characters' actions and comes to her own conclusions as to how they should be. This is sort of like Ryan Johnson. And just like Ryan Johnson, she does not take well to criticism and seems to revel in making fans angry. This is not the behavior of a good, respectable, professional writer. You are under arrest, Chancellor. Are you threatening me, Master Jedi? The Senate will decide your fate. I am the Senate. Outright ruining characters and getting happy at fans being pissed off about you changing their entire personality is not how you should act as a writer. But speaking of ruining characters, we have Catherine Elizabeth Halsey. My god, does this woman hate Halsey. The vitriol that every character in these books feels towards her is utterly ridiculous, and it highlights the biggest issue most have with her books. She came to her own opinions about the character after not doing her homework right, and decided that she was literally... demonetized. I'm not kidding when I say that Halsey's journal is compared to Mein Kampf in her books. I don't believe I have to explain as to why that is so insanely and comically asinine. The way that the Kilo 5 trilogy portrays Halsey as an egomaniac who will do anything to satisfy her scientific mind and who believes herself superior to everyone is woefully out of character. Halsey, under Eric Nyland's writing in particular, was never anything other than someone who did what she felt was necessary to save lives. Whereas Travis portrays Halsey as some mastermind that created the Spartan 2 program and has no remorse. We know this to not be true. Halsey felt immense guilt over her role as the architect of the Spartan 2 program, and as we see in Ghosts of Onyx, she was willing to take what Spartans were left to Onyx because of the warped motherly feelings she had towards them. This shows that Halsey is not heartless. Oni even wanted to fully indoctrinate the Spartan 2s, but Halsey wanted them to have free will. And that's another issue. Oni knows about the Spartan 2 program, they funded it and created it. Parangoski acts as though she has no idea that the Spartan 2 candidates were replaced with Flash clones. Halsey was a civilian, and she improved upon the Carver findings, the study or algorithm that predicted the insurrection would break out into a massive war. Halsey deduced that it would be far worse and would eventually lead to the downfall of human civilization. And so, after presenting this to Michael Stanforth, a captain at the time, she was approached by Oni and agreed to work with them, as in a mutual partnership. Oni funded and created the Orion 2 project, dubbed the Spartan 2 project by Halsey, we literally have footage of Oni agents kidnapping the Spartan 2 candidates. So, why is there any issue over the use of Flash clones? And moreover, where the hell does Parangoski get off feeling morally superior about the use of Flash clones over Halsey? 
The woman that has undoubtedly done far, far worse over the course of her career and who greenlit the use of hundreds of child suicide soldiers in the Spartan 3 program is suddenly aghast at the use of flash clones? Why? 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 Is it somehow better to use child soldiers if they're orphans? Or because they agreed to be used as soldiers against the Covenant even though they're too young to give consent? Is it somehow better because they have no one to miss them? They don't have to be replaced with quick to die flash clones? No, neither of them are morally okay, but they are both necessary. Parangoski is so against Halsey for ridiculous reasons, and not only that, but no character seems to hate Parangoski or stop to ponder that maybe, just maybe, Parangoski is far, far, far worse than Halsey could ever hope to be. Oni knew about the flash clones, there's no way that they didn't. They created and funded the project, and they were privy to all of it. This is an absurd argument from Parangoski, and it highlights Karen Travis's terrible writing. And on a side note, the characters of Mal and Vaz never seem to stop and consider that Parangoski is literally grooming Sarah and Osmond to be the same kind of ruthless that she is, and that she doesn't actually care about Osmond, which is something she even admits herself. But apparently Parangoski can do no wrong in these books, but Halsey is this horribly written pseudo-villain. This kind of Halsey hate also extends to characters that were her allies in the past, such as Lord Hood and Mendez. Mendez is all of a sudden horrifically guilty and cynical and hates Halsey, and Lord Hood seems to not be able to stand her either. This flies in the face of how these characters acted in the past. There is a gigantic difference between developing characters and having them do things that are woefully out of character, and as a writer, you should not be self-inserting to bash on a fictional character. Travis also gets a number of things ridiculously wrong, such as the Covenant using conventional missiles instead of plasma torpedoes. Uh, stating that the Spartan 3s had no genetic requirements for selection, and implying that they just look like normal children, even though they have the build of Olympic athletes and are augmented. Lucy, a Spartan, punching Halsey with all of her strength, and Halsey getting up without so much as a broken nose, even though this would have killed her instantly. It would have been like this. <coughs> implying that Halsey forcibly stole a governor's ship, even though it belonged to a rebel force and not the UNSC, and ignoring the cannon that she took it stealthily, without violence. And my favorite saying that Halsey lied to Oni about the use of Flash clones, which makes no sense whatsoever because Oni was definitely in on it. These are all ridiculous holes in the canon now, and her writing laid the foundation for the portrayal of Oni and Halsey and the elites under the 343 era of Halo. Halsey being an egomaniac and working with Jules and Dama is the most absurd thing I've ever seen. She was willing to do morally reprehensible things that were deemed necessary or for a greater good. It was a gray morality and Karen Travis portrayed it as a black and white morality, with Halsey firmly in the realm of immorality. Oni was never portrayed as a shadow government before Karen Travis's books, and the way they act and hunt the truth reaches truly asinine levels. Oni does not supersede the UNSC or the UEG, but the way they're portrayed seems to show that they secretly do. Parangoski wishing to not only turn the Sangheili against one another, but exterminate them all and colonize Sangheilios should her plan fail, does absolutely not a single thing to benefit humanity. There are still Covenant remnants and insurrectionists out there fighting with humanity and destroying our only ally only hurts us. Oni was always portrayed as a shadowy, mysterious organization, but when we meet characters like Michael Stanforth and Elias Haverson, both of whom worked for Oni, we don't get the same kind of impression that Karen Travis gives them. Oni seemed to be an organization willing to do whatever necessary to save humanity, so why do they wish to destroy our only allies? Why do they hate Halsey so much as to arrest her as a war criminal? Yes, she technically committed treason in Ghost of Onyx, but that alone flies in the face of how her character is written by Travis as some mad scientist. She only wished to save the last of her Spartans. I firmly believe Oni would not need someone to take the fall like they do with Halsey. Her work saved the human race, and the public is still not privy to the Spartan 2 program's secrets. Even if Spartans were not created to fight the Covenant, they still would have served the purpose of saving humanity by preventing large-scale insurrection had the Covenant not shown up at all. The Spartans were a necessary evil, like the Genophage in Mass Effect. But no matter which way you decide to spin it, Halsey being arrested as a war criminal makes no sense. And honestly, neither does Oni anymore. They're an inconsistent mess now, and instead of just being a spooky intelligence organization like they were, they are now an outright evil organization defying everyone and secretly undermining the authority of the UNSC and UEG. But that's just my opinion. 
I hope what I brought up is at least interesting to the like five people who watch my channel. I hope you'll stick around for my next video, which actually is going to cover something I just mentioned, which is the genophage in Mass Effect. Until then, I'm going to go rant about Karen Travis for five hours. See ya.